Hey you guys, this is Allison, hanging out in my space to craft and bringing you um, really two coordinating pages, not really a two page layout so much, um, but uh, in my rodeo series, I had two sets of pictures. One is of these pony rides, and what I was showing you there was this alpha sheet that's really busy, but um, I will end up using it to mat a photo and I'm going to cut letters out to make the title for the pony rides. The other page is just a one page photo um, on the same day of my daughter and I. So I just want to make that a featured layout. I don't get that many pictures of she and I um, where it's, you know, cute and posed. So I wanted to take advantage of it. So I'm trying to figure out how to take this one sheet of paper. <clears throat> and oh, by the way, after all of this, I found another, of some more of that paper in a scrap in my scrap bin. So I probably didn't need to be quite so conservative on the use of this paper, but I made it work. So, um, I'm trying to figure out what to do, and I'm going to use some Kiwi Lane brackets. Mm -hmm. And I, my goal is to mimic the outline that's printed on that um, paper a little bit. So I'm just looking at my different templates, trying to figure out what will work. I pick one, and I'm going to um, do the trick where I do it to a point and then turn it around um, to... Uh, basically create um, that look. Um, however, because I'm trying to spread that paper across two pages, I'm, I'm going to do some tricks with it. So this blue piece of paper is an old Creative Memories and it's so old it's not quite 12 by 12, it's 11 and a half by 12. So I have to extend a border out to one side to make it fit on a 12 by 12. So if you haven't used the Kiwi Lane templates, you simply draw, you know, trace around the edge of the template and then hand cut. Um, and so here I'm going to do that and think about how wide I want that, um, but I'm going to end up doing just the top and the bottom and then putting a strip across the middle to um, to use the other side of the paper. So you'll see as this progresses. So it gets pretty fussy in the cutting. I have to really think about how am I going to cut this and not destroy the full length, the 12 inch lengths of, of paper? I probably could have done it a little bit easier to just <clears throat> do the top and leave the bottom, but. So um, here I've sort of cut ahead. I've. I've done uh, two of those brackets. I've picked a different bracket and I'm going to cut one to be the border on the other side of the paper. And then I'm just trying to optimize that so I can still get a strip of paper um, to go across those two photos. Sorry, across that, that middle. Um, paper. So this took me quite a while just to get the base pages done, but I, I was happy with the way they turned out. Um, and it was a way to use this very old um, paper that um, has been sitting in my stash for a long time asking me to use it. So. So I have about a two inch strip to go across the middle. And I just wanna make sure that the photos won't 
extend too far past the, that decorative, the decorative brackets. And then um, at some point I end up realizing that having it straight go straight the way it is, is not working. And I use the brackets to um, sort of cut into it so that it follows that line. So you can see here the top sort of follows the, the border, but the bottom, the, the middle part doesn't. Um, and I think I do that later. I may do that off camera, but you will notice in the finished product that where that is going straight down is, is it's not working here, and so I fix it. So I finally have that base page done. <laughs> Took a bit. Oh, here I go. So I'm just, I'm just lining it up just to get a little bit of an angle on each of them. And it takes a little bit of fussing back and forth to get them even because I wasn't measuring. I was eyeballing it and in reality it doesn't matter if it's perfect because it's just to give that that curve your eye someplace to align and pretend that that's a whole <clears throat> complete decorative element instead of two pieces of paper So, and ink hides everything, pretty much. So, as you can see, I think that looks just a lot better. So, one of those cases where you adjust as you go. Now to work on this second sheet, and remember this one is a little narrow, so I really, I have to line it up to make it um, the full 12 inch width. And this is um, a border strip off that same, I'll just call it carnival paper because that's what the whole kit reminds me of. So, and here's where I think I remember that it's not 12 inches, so. I'm, I, and I'm using the other piece of paper to line it up. But I really like that uh, border strip because it brings in the red from the other side and I think it works really well. So you can see it's not really so much a two-page layout as sort of coordinated and I do make sure I use the same papers from both sides but with the background paper so different it doesn't really look like a um, is much like a two-page layout. So in um, a 20-minute video, you're getting two for the price of one. So just trimming the photos. I don't, I don't necessarily stick to four, four by six photos or standard size photos. I, I tend to crop things down to what will work. Though I have started trying to be more consistent about three by five, four by four, three by three, <clears throat> et cetera, um, so that other folks can, you know, you can scrap lift me or do sketches or something like that. So here's that page. Um, I sort of found a little bit of ephemera. I, I did a cutout of that paper. <laughs> And then I'm going to start work. I'm setting that aside so I can start work on this other one. So I end up having to piece scraps together so that it looks like I have an extra piece of paper underneath that. I'm just trying to get a layered look 
um, to that photograph. So I have um, one, two, I think I already have three, two or three. Um, I have a cream mat, the, the alpha paper, and I may have a darker blue behind it as well. And then that um, funky yellow paper. Here I, I used my die cutting machine to create some, some letters out of cream. And then I just didn't want to put the cream on there. So I'm using um, the honey color of Distress Oxide on it. And I'm okay with it, but then I have to mess with it. So I really wanted to try an ombre effect. It didn't work out great. Um, but I think I'll try a little brown to try an ombre brown because, you know, cowboys. Um, so I pull out a little bit lighter, uh, well, darker than the tea dye because I didn't love that. And then I decide, so the ombre works on this, and I probably should have just left it, but I didn't love the brown with all the warmer tones. So um, I end up pulling out my lumberjack red, trying to get some red, and it's it ends up a little muddy. So I may, in the end, I haven't done it yet, but I may recut these letters um, and try again. Because when I look at the page, I'm, I'm not super happy with it. So um, it just is a little too muddy. I mean, it's okay. It's just not, it's not perfect. So... I may, I may make another effort and then just layer them on top <laughs> of these letters. And nobody will know. But I think it's just, I have a limited number of distress oxides and distress inks. And so um, when you don't have every color, it, it, there's limits. All right, so I came back um, with some ephemera. I went off and cut some, I decided I wanted more of all the papers on there, so I create these um, banners and use the three colors of um, scraps. I had to switch out my adhesive. So just getting the, the photo down and trying to sort of get the placement using the, you know, not, not in the center. And then just adding some more dimension to it. And this looks, um, in the video, it does have some little Western style things on it. And there's some, so just trying to make some layers there cute little card that I cut off of the um, collage paper at the beginning and then adding some of those stickers from the Western sticker pack that I had that I've had for ages I'm so glad to be getting some of it used I end up not using all of it in this series though but I do I do make a dent So I just decided to go with a simple title, Mom and Me. Um, sometimes I can be super literal on my, on my titles. I need to try and be a little more creative. All right, so that is the left-hand side.
and here's the right hand side but I need some more embellishment and work on this right hand page So I matted um, one of the pictures, but not the other. And then just made my own little embellishment with a, f a blue frame and then a piece of that um, alpha paper. And then start adding other small embellishments. Oh, this is the title. So I'm just inking each of the letters. I probably should have sped it up, but uh, sorry, I probably should have edited it out, but since I sped it up, it's not too terrible. So I just use the, I have some scrapbook.com adhesive squares. And so I'm just using those. And again, I went super literal with pony rides. And I just want to nestle that in, in the corner of the two photos. And then I'm looking to add that, that yellow. I don't remember if I end up doing it or not. And this sticker says Giddy Up, and I do add that um, as a subtitle, if you will. So just looking at what else I can add, I don't think I end up adding any of those. This one I do because I want to fill that crevice and it pulls that yellow in from the other side of the page as well. So I'm happy with that. And then the cowboy hat's going to go on top of them. So they are, they're clear stickers, but they're, the printing is very opaque. So they don't look like clear stickers once they're, once they're down. They're not like a vellum, if you will. So sorry about the glare on that from my light, but it says giddy up. So I'm just looking for that. I'm looking for some wordy bits, I think, to add to the top. All right, so I think it's time for just a few more little bits and enamel dots. And in just a minute, sorry, my dog is making noise scratching. Um, it will go a little bit slower so we can get some close ups. So I'm talking about some of the wordy bits that I added there, and I think I may have done those off, off video, so. All right, so now let's take a look at some close-ups.
So handmade title using those Kiwi Lane brackets and a border strip. And then a variety. Cutting those letters out um, for the title was pretty fun. And then just tying in that same paper in a few other places. Thanks for watching, you guys.